All right, so today we're going to start on the basics of, of news writing. This is going to be different than writing for a research paper or an essay. You're going to learn how to really write clearly, communicate important information to your art audience. All right, you bet. You have to remember. You have, we start writing before we start writing. We have to remember to always focus on your audience. Audience centric. Be audience centric. That's why we're doing this. That always has to be. And in anything you write, it has to. You have to hammer that into your into your head. All right, we're going to do some things here. We're going to learn about uh, approaches to what are called leads, those first sentences that uh, hook your, uh, your your readers. And we have to be able to not only write a good lead, but we have to know when there's a good or bad lead. All right, um, we're going to learn about the writing the story using the five W's and the one H. Well, I know you already know that. Um, and we're going to use uh, the inverted pyramid, and you're going to see that. Um, you're going to find different types of quotes in here and understand why we use uh, attribution. Um, it's important when you're when you're a journalist. Uh, this is, we're going to learn about that too. All right. And like I said, we're going to use the inverted pyramid. We're going to focus on what the audience needs to know. And well, you have to understand what uh, doesn't matter, what your source thinks is most important. There's a lot more important things to write about. We're here. We're here. We're going to use the inverted pyramid. This is the inverted pyramid. It puts the most important details at the top, and uh, he's using as many of the five W's and the one H as possible. Then, as the story proceeds, they fill in some more facts, and then to give a to give a more complete picture, that's the middle. Always kind of like remember my hook on meat and potatoes. Wrap it up. So yeah, so there's your meat and potatoes, the middle of it, and then the bottom is the stuff that yeah you can put it in there. It's not the most important stuff. It's also in a pyramid, so that's when the editors uh, look at it. They go, they go from the bottom up, because they they know that that's the first stuff uh, that writers know. That's the first stuff that's getting cut out. Okay, so you can put it stuff in there if if, if you want. Um, it's not crucial if it doesn't make it. It's uh, that's why this pyramid is so important. You get the most important stuff on top, then then the other stuff to support that helps but it's not as important there than the bottom stuff. Stuff, yeah, we can have it, but it, if it gets cut out, it's not a big deal, all right? So, you know, have, first and foremost, we have to, uh, in your mindset, it is using this formula. Is it a formula? Yeah, but it's uh, an important formula that it, it takes a little while to learn, but as you do it and do it again, it'll become second nature. Okay. Now, here's the example from the book, and they use it quite a bit, but it works very well. Um, this is a sample press release. Get used to it, because you're going to be in the, being a journalist, you're going to get a heck of a lot of press releases. Um, and for those of you who want to do PR, this, this class can help you. Um, so you can make a more journalist-friendly press release, so they don't have to sift through it. But that's not always going to be the case, so that's why this is important. This is quite important to uh, to understand, all right. So you know, because it's your job, all right. It's your job to sift through what what they give you, and when you use the uh, inverted pyramid, it's to compose the best possible article article that will inform your readers best. Okay, so now we see obviously the fire and someone was hurt, but they gotta have it all around. They and this is basically a press release from a fire department. And they put it in a way that they focused on themselves first, which makes sense. They have information there that matters to them and probably has something to do with their official reports. So that's why you're seeing ladder trucks and pumper 32. And they, they have a certain thing, uh, process they go forth with when they have to fill out fire reports and stuff like that. And these are important information that they have to fill out. So that's the mindset they're coming from. Doesn't really work for what we're doing. So just understand that depending on where your press releases are coming from, there's a reason to why, why they, uh, they prioritize certain things that we as uh, j journalists don't. Um, they have what they, the information they need and they present in the way it works best for them. We have to take that same information and tweak it in a way that works for us so, uh, to best to uh, service our audience. Okay, so basically you think about this and it's hook them, meat and potatoes, wrap it up. Okay, most important fact here is Jim Smith. All right, he was ser seriously injured. He's at the hospital. He's in critical condition. All right, because of the fire. 
there is the who and the what. So Jim Smith hurt in a fire, critical condition at, at a medical facility, they call it. And then, so then where? 411 Cherry Street. Okay, we might say just Cherry Street. We might put in 411 Cherry, South Cherry Street. Um, news does it a little different. We go the 400 block of South Cherry Street. Um, you definitely from a, from that from a local news standpoint, you'll hear the whatever block in the uh, in newspapers and stuff like it, like print. They will tend to more give the actual address, so that that'll be more appropriate in this instance. Also, uh, let's see. When it was about 5 p.m., uh, so it's 5:11 p.m. Uh, about 5 p.m. I said they got a, uh, a, f a phone call from 911, so we can assume it's about 5 p.m. on a Tuesday. And then how and why, we so we know, we not, might not always know what happened, but we do in this case. The how and why is because, uh, because uh, Jim Smith, uh, he lit, Jim Smith uh, lit a cigarette near a leaky gas stove and it exploded. Then you have lots of other information. The next step I would take, um, I would go fire department arrives to find smoke. And what the fire fighters did to control the fire should probably come next. I'll uh, mention that the wife and the daughter, uh, his wife Susie, his daughter Jane, were unharmed. And then uh, the next thing is uh, monetary damages that uh, follow uh, that. Because um, you have the information, it's interesting. The fact that you got all that in such a quick period of time isn't the norm. It usually takes a, might take a little while for damages to come out but if you have that information then that then you would go after making sure the wife and the daughter are okay because, and then you bring up the damages the number of bedrooms it doesn't really matter We're talking about three bedroom one bath but this isn't a real estate ad no one cares about that also the uh the types of vehicles in this case not really all that important no one really cares about that that's one of those things the firefighters care about because it probably has something to do with how they fill out the reports they have to probably list oh what how who went and what equipment was used and stuff like that so they tend to put that stuff in there uh, not usually all that important but no uh so sometimes some things happen where a uh, special vehicle or piece of equipment is brought in and that can sometimes warrant the uh, warrant uh, mentioned in an article such as a uh, medical chopper is brought in because they have to get the get the victim of whatever happened so quickly to to the nearest hospital or or a specific hospital that has certain equipment that others don't or so, sometimes when there's a really bad car wreck then you can and sometimes they have to use the jaws of life um, to to get the, the people out of there and they we we tend to use that as well. So it sometimes in extreme circumstances it warrants it. Here they just were listing what was there, so it doesn't really matter in this case. First and foremost, remember it's about the audience. Why should the person care? Why is it important? It's always the most important part of the hookem. Why should people care about any story? Okay, that's that's always the most important thing. And what's in it for me? Um, lots of times, uh, the writers and journalists, they think big picture, they sometimes forget, well, why should these people care? So you always have to think of that when you're writing a story. So the important part is, especially if we think about the story we just saw, how does, it, how does that fire impact the average person? Well, they, the, the, the possible impact of that story is, well, he, he, the person was a smoker, had a leak of gas, uh, the stove, the oven, or the stove had a leaky gas. Uh, there was a gas leak there, and you know that could happen to anyone. Um, you know, it, it was a fire. Fires, fires can happen. Um, that's something. And so that 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 could possibly impact any number of people. But that could easily happen to any number of other people out there. So, and you know, somebody got hurt. There's something happened. It could be in the neighborhood. Of that specific uh, uh, of a one specific reader could be right around the corner, so that impacts them. Uh, maybe maybe they knew the person. That could possibly be it. Um, could be you know, a friend of their kids or a parent of a uh, their friend or something like that. Um, 
it could be any number of, uh, especially when you're talking about the local level. Um, so that's why any number of those uh, pieces of information could have um, helped um, or could have impacted a specific reader. It depends on the reader. But as first and foremost, someone died. Well, someone, first and foremost, in that is someone got hurt. There was a fire. It was local. Um, this is the, you know, this is the, uh, the information that you got from it. And depending on the, who's reading it, 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 certain aspects might have certain meanings to certain people. So, uh, so also when you when you're writing your story, not just with in this story, but any story, always remember what the impact is of these stories on the people that are reading them. It could be gas prices, it could be mortgage rates, it could be credit card rates, it could be traffic. Maybe there's a uh, road construction going on, and if people, and there's a big rework of of the roads or something. How does that affect? The average person. What does the average person have to do? Does the person have to uh, have to make an alternate route? I mean, these are the things you have to connect the dots to. You have to think of well, what these certain um, stories, how they affect the people. Um, there's a new arena being built. How does that affect the everyday person's bottom line? In that case, are their taxes going up? Is you know, is, is it going to cause traffic problems in the area? Is you know is there work going to be done? I mean you have to you have to look at it and that you have to bring up those important factors that may Im impact people the readers' lives. All right, now what we have to do is build a lead, and you're going to build the lead from the inside out. That lead sentence, uh, the lead is the thing that hooks your reader into that story. So this is the part where you hook them. Okay. And a couple of different ways uh, to do it. We still have our five W's, what, where, when, who, why, and the one H, how. So what happened, where did it happen, when did it happen, who is it about, why, and how. How did it happen, here's your event. And you have to kind of prioritize. Uh, what are the, every story is a little different. The characters are different, the, the situation is different. The one thing that is most important is, is, is a lot of the, is the impact. Why is this important? What makes it important? And every story is different. You have to be able to prioritize which is the most important fact here. All right, and that's by case by case scenario. Yeah, you're still using a formula, but within that formula, it's important to understand that journalism is a flexible medium. All right, you're going to use a formula, but every event is different, every story is different, and you have to be flexible with it by being able to prioritize which is the most important. Okay, so basically the, your, the whole point of the lead, you want to create what is called a single sentence paragraph, anywhere from about 25, 35 words, and you want to capture, get, get those elements. You know, probably, it's probably not going to be able to fit into one sentence. If it takes a couple sentences, it's fine, a few sentences, but it's making sure the most important stuff is at the top. The whole heart of the story is at the top. So don't write never-ending run-on sentences just to make, oh, there's a lead, so it all has to be one. No, is you you're still going to write quick, it's going to be clear, it's going to be um, coherent, it's going to it's going to make it's going to make sense and, and it's going to be easy to read. You have to make sure it's easy to read. But you want to get it there in that first that the lead in the first chunk of that uh first bit top of the story. So top top is hook 'em. So that's where you want to hook 'em. So just understand it's probably might take a couple sentences to get to get your lead. And then then you figure out the the other W's or the H depends on the story. And once again, you're remembering it. You're still using this within the pyramid, the importance. Most important stuff on top, middle stuff that supports in the middle. Bottom is the other stuff that you can include, but that stuff you don't really necessarily need. All right, so, so now I just told you some things about prioritizing when you're creating a lead, but there's another way to think about it. Uh, building a lead from what they call the inside out. You're starting off at the core, and then you're building upon that core. So what's the most important thing is at the core, then the next layer is the next important, and the next layer is the next important, so on and so forth. So think of it as like the Earth, and the Earth's core is the most important, then they have the next layer, and it's, it's a series of layers to that story. And the, the least important uh, aspects of that story are the ones in the most, in the outer layers of that uh, that circle or that core or that planet, however you want to do it. So layer after layer after layer, the more ex external layers are the least less important 
uh, facts here. What this helps you do is the, the focus, giving you, uh, the, you know, your readers focus uh, on what the most important thing is to your readers. At the, at the, at the heart of it, what's the, uh, what's the at the heart of it? Who did what to whom or what had happened that's so important? Why does it impact me or the world or whatever? Well, and that's where you first start off at, whatever that story is. So in this case, in this example, it's a sports uh, example. They show the Cleveland Cavaliers won the the NBA championship, which is a really big deal because then the next thing you see, if you know anything about Cleveland, they don't win too many championships very often for a city uh, title in 52 years. So that's that in its in itself. Anytime a uh, in this case, a championship, if it's a city that hasn't won a championship in long, that's usually the next thing you always hear, especially when it's a city, not just the team itself, but the city. It might be just the team, so that might be its second. Maybe the, maybe the Indians or the Browns had won a championship before that, but they hadn't. But um, maybe the Cavaliers hadn't won a championship in a long time. It all depends on the situation. But here, that's, that's the next uh, most important thing. And then, you know, how... Uh, when you know well, what and you know and and then as you go out um so they won the championship first title in 52 years what are how they did it you know did they sweep did the did the you know was it a seven game series who starred that helped them do that lots of things like that and that's and that's how we see you know how uh and in this case is they came back from a 3-1 deficit to, be, to, be, to defeat the Golden State Warriors. And then maybe another one, oh, uh, next thing uh, it might be, uh, oh, along the way the next layer might be uh, LeBron James scored, uh, averaged uh, 45 points a game in those next uh, three games to overtake them from the win the championship. And then maybe at the end, oh, the, the another layer might be, oh, the championship uh, parade is next week down Main Street in uh, in Cleveland, and, and that would be your last thing. Okay, now we have the different types of leads, and the first type of lead is the summary lead, and this was the lead I was talking about before when we were talking about the fire before. This is basically taking the five W's and the one H and trying to prioritize the the highlights, the facts of that uh, of that of the highlights, facts of that story and uh, organize it in a way that it 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 hooks your it ho it hooks your readers so that's what the summary lead is that's what the summary is the one that just highlights the the the, the top facts of it not necessarily not every story is necessarily going to have a summary lead it depends uh what the what what the story is so each story you got to figure out which lead depending on the nature of the story that's the type of lead you'll use. Summary lead works in a lot of instances, but know that this one isn't necessarily what you're going to use every single time. And that's why I'm listing the different types of leads. So you do know which one works best for which situation. Now the next one is name recognition lead. Uh, name recognition leads, it's in, it's in the name itself. Um, you know, what's a big part of, uh, of, of the news? It's Famous people, either political or music or athletes or any, whatever reason these people are famous. Some people are famous for no reason, which is sad, but it's the, it's, it's, it's the truth. Uh, so in this case, the person who was involved in this story is the most important aspect of that story. So, so it depends on what the story is. So for in the example, in the example the book gives is Ryan Lochte. He was a famous swimmer um, during the Rio de Janeiro Olympics a few years back. There were four athletes involved in a uh, in, in a in a possible crime. They were getting it was after hours. They got involved in uh, some things they probably didn't shouldn't have gotten involved with. Something happens all across the country, so most of the times it's it's not a big deal. Uh, some people get involved, get a little, get a little uh, drunk or inebriated, and uh, some things happen. And most of those times, you never really hear about. Sometimes you will if something big happens or extreme damage or someone gets hurt really badly or even worse. 
but most of the times you don't hear about a lot of that, but you will hear about when it's out, out when it's uh, Ryan Lochte, the former uh, Olympic Olympic swimmer who was uh, well known, and it happened at a big place such as the Olympics. So that's that's a uh, that's a big deal. Lochte won twelve Olympic medals, so that that was uh, that was a very big deal, um, and that's where you get the it's uh, name recognition. You know, it's there were you know, the three other guys involved, but nobody really knows who they were. Well, they knew who Ryan Lochte was. Unfortunately, in this case, it, it orbited around him. But that is a, the name recognition lead is wi widely used to this day. Okay, the next type of lead that we have here is the interesting action lead. And it says odd actions or strange occurrences are interesting. They are. Uh, what happens is more important than who did it. Sometimes people do pretty crazy things. You don't hear about it too often. Who really did it in this case because it isn't a famous person doesn't matter as much. The, the name might get mentioned. Sometimes it doesn't. It's more the <laughs> what the craziness that occurred. And sometimes things are crazy that happen in remote locations but still get the attention of uh, national media and especially with the web the way it is today just spreads like wildfire so so that's what the, these are the interesting action lead the, the what matters uh, more than who in this case in the example they have here is the 27 year old man told place he never really meant to blow up the main street quickie mart when he used a lit cigarette to kill a spider near a running gas pump it was an accident and in, if you, it, it's in quotes, never really meant to. So that you know, it's, that was a quote. But it blew up. It blew up uh, a quickie mark, which is like a it's, it's a convenience store. Try to kill a spider uh, near running gas pump. That doesn't sound so smart when you think about it. But if you're going to be in this industry, you're going to realize it, human intelligence can sometimes be an oxymoron. And that's just reality. There's a lot of goofy people out there do things that aren't so bright. And uh, working in, the, in this industry, you'll hear about a lot of those types of stories and just make you shake your head, but you still got to get the salary. Next type of lead we're talking about is the event lead. Uh, the event lead is for meetings. It could be speeches, news conferences, and it's focused more on what happens, not merely, you know, it's, it was there. But, okay, great. That's the most important thing. The event, what, what happened at this event? That's why people care. Once again, going back to audience focus, the news that comes from this meeting, comes from this newscast is what matters. Why? Because it affects the people that this meeting was about. The, whatever the, the point was to that meeting affects people, and that's why it's important. It's the impact. Once again, you're seeing the impact. So let's take a look at an example of a not-so-great lead and a better lead. Here we have... Um, Johnsonville City Council. The Johnsonville City Council held a meeting Tuesday to discuss increasing overnight parking rates. That doesn't really tell you too much. It just means, oh yeah, they talked about it. There's no real, there's no real consequence in there. Nobody cares. There's no impact. Basically, the, the, from reading that that statement there, it says, oh yeah, they had the uh, city council had a meeting. They talked about overnight parking rates, but did not discuss one consequence from that. And there were consequences to that. So that's the main reason why that's just not very good. Okay, let's lose one. Next one is better. Overnight parking rates in Johnsonville will double in the next year, the city council decided Tuesday. That's better. I, I'm not thrilled with the comma city council decide Tuesday. Um, I think there may be a better way to write that. Maybe these are my, uh, eh, from a print standpoint, it's probably pretty good. Remember, I'm from uh, Broadcast News, so I, it's a little different. We would probably do it a little differently, but that's still a much more solid lead than the previous one. Here, you know, the, fir the first thing you hit in here is parking rates are doubling. Overnight parking rates are doubling in Johnsonville. That's the impact. Boom, you hit people over the head with it. Um, it's doubling in the next year. That's a huge consequence for a lot of people. The other one doesn't tell you much of anything. And so they had a meeting. They talked about parking. That that's just terrible. I mean, you you want to hit the impact over and uh, right people over the head with it. And the second one does that much better. And who did it and when it happened, okay? And then you then you go into the details after that and the rest of the uh, within the rest of the uh, article. So here's another event lead example. Let's uh, take a look at this. 
The bad one, Senator Jane Gowan, spoke at Big State University on Tuesday about the problems associated with student loan debt and what it will do to students throughout the country. Okay, once again, very general. And that might work in a paper or an essay, but for news, it's not hitting what you really want to hit. You're not getting the impact right away. You're, wi you're having your readers wait to find out the main push of that story, the whole point, the impact of the story, and that you cannot do that. Always hit them with the impact first. Impact first, hook them, hook them, hook them, okay? Student loans will lead to a debt bomb that could dwarf the mortgage crisis unless the federal government steps in, Senator Jane Gowan said Tuesday during a visit to Big State University. Much better. Why? Because once again, you hit people over the head with the impact. Student loans. Now, that, that, that hits you guys. That hits me. I just graduated my MFA. That would definitely um, definitely hit me, and, I, and I, I'm doing the whole mortgage thing, too, at the same time with student loans. So uh, anyway, uh, but yeah, so you're seeing the impact right here is what's most important as opposed to what this does. This is just, once again, it's generic. doesn't really help you. Always remember the impact. Hook the people. What's the big impact from that story that you will put in that story? And with that event lead, the, what happened from that meeting? Yeah, the meeting happened, but what was the thing that really, that, that what was the big development from that meeting that makes the most news, that is the most, has the most impact on your possible readers. And then there's the uh, second day lead. Second day lead is kind of a misnomer. It's um, a developing story. Sometimes stories are not just one event and done. Sometimes there are many levels and a continuing story as things go on um, and more develops, developments happen to that story. The newest information will go up top. Then it has to go back to whatever other stories that may, uh, other details of the story to catch people up. So that's a lot of time. A lot of times when you'll read, yeah, they you people may know about this story from previous things, but you can't necessarily assume that you go in thinking that people have some sort of knowledge of that story. And but if they don't, this part, the second part. So say it's a. Uh, crime or murder or something and uh, new information pops up and it's an ongoing story the newest information say the, uh, the the person is caught or the person's up on trial and they, they've they've come down with the verdict or any number of other things however you're on the story you always start off with the most the newest bit of information then you go to other previous information just in case um, people might not necessarily know. You want to tie it back. The second day lead is the newest information. Then you do a little bit of exposition after that. And th these stories could keep being updated and changed. And you have to find that right amount of uh, change of what you're putting in there. So second day leads can be a little more complicated, but that's with an ongoing story. And chances are if you, you might have to do, if you've started on a story, they may have you continue with that story because you already have a background with it, you have the information with it. So that's usually when the story does develop like that and there's more chapters, quote unquote chapters of the story, uh, you're probably the best person to keep con continuing on with that story.